<clears throat> Greetings to David Sarbative. Say our I D I F, and this is its spell. We understand that you have many queries for this day, but before diving in to those queries, there are the two things that we wish to express. The first, above and beyond all things that are expressed in this day, to know, to feel, and to perceive that you are loved in our perspective is of the utmost importance. Secondly, it is our greatest excitement and within that same form of great excitement in which we co-create with you, not only in this moment, but through all moments of your linear time perspective as well. And of course, you may begin your queries at your leisure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, for of course. Mm. And it is amazing to connect with you once again. My first question to you, please. I think because of the way you started this, that's where I'd like to start as well, Ardith. What is the purpose? What is the reason? Why do you come through, Rob? Why do you contact us? Why are you here with me or any of us? And what is your purpose or reason behind connecting at this time? Yes, of course. First of all, in the moment of connection, we are what most humans would perceive that a type one consciousness. And a type one consciousness holds very strong ideology and oneness. First of all, we do not perceive ourselves as separate, as human consciousness. Yes, we are different form of all that is than you yourself. I am a different form from other Denebian beings within my own race. But all of us are from that one universal collective consciousness, all that is expressed through its infinite forms and expressions. So in our own perspective, it is our duty to connect with that energy and information that is beyond ourselves, to utilize that information and to share the information for consciousnesses that have not developed, to hold that information from their own intuition. Now, of course, that perspective holds a bit of division in it itself, because you're not truly a different energy, you're not truly a lower form of consciousness or a lower degree of consciousness. But what you are is one part of all that is, desiring to understand more. And we, a part of all that is, also desires to understand more. So we bring forward that which is above us, distribute that information back to that which is below us in the chain, brings forth the oneness that exists within. Now, of course, why am I here personally? My own excitement has led my own consciousness to co-create with human beings. We have done this for thousands of years in your Earth experience. The small blue men that came from the skies that your ancestors spoke of was our own race. Now, of course, it was not this iteration of our race. It was a part of our own consciousness we existed in that of the early sixth density and late fifth density forms of consciousness, and they were not our true bodies. Our true bodies were only experienced in that late fifth density and early sixth density form. So how were we able to work with human beings in a physical sense? We worked with humans deeply in that physical sense by manifesting a physical form into third density, and expressing our own consciousness through that energy, dividing that from what we were, and expressing that energy in to the avatar format that worked with your human consciousness. Now, of course, in this time, we are only working with human beings from a telepathic perspective, and that is due to the nature of how Earth desires for other beings not to co-create in a physical sense. Too many humans do not understand that other beings exist. Too many humans are frightened of those that do exist. But back in the times of your ancient Egypt, back in the times of your ancient China, back in the times of your ancient Iran, India, and South American co-creations where our physical bodies were, 
manifest in Tavas House State in order to co-create with the humans upon Earth. They were widely accepted. They understood that their gods from the stars would come. They understood that the nature of co-creating from the information, knowledge that was expressed and extended through the beings that were the gods from heavens in their perspectives would come back and they were open for us, arms wide open and their hearts and minds ready to learn that which they did not understand. That is why we were able to co-create. Being a type one consciousness is not simply understanding oneness, but respecting your own evolution as a whole, respecting the sovereignty of your consciousness and respecting your desire for us as a whole to be here or not to be upon earth as well. Mm. I resonate deeply with what you said in my own way, following that excitement, that yearning to know more and to connect more deeply. And thank you also for sharing that history of when you were able to co-create in an avatar state. Fascinating. And may I ask what planet, cosmos, star you are from? Yes, of course. If you look into your star and night and look into the sky itself, you will notice the constellation of Cygnus, the swan. Now, in that constellation, we are known as Alpha Cygnus, but also known as Denib. Now, if you were to go into your own system of planetary consciousness and go to the planet that is known as Mars, you could go to the North Pole, look directly upward, and we would be one of two stars circling one another. The brightest star, but still one of two stars. That is Dina. That is the constellation Cygnus. That is our location. If you were to go there in a spaceship out of this moment, you would only see two of the multiple planets that exist there, because the other planets are not existent within the third and fourth density state. And if you were to find our planet itself, you would not perceive our own life, only that life of the animals and plants that exist. Because that density form of energy is also shifted by multiple forms of dimension. A density is not simply a state of evolution. It is not only progression from a soul in growth towards the evolution of that soul, but it is also the expression of dimension shifting as well. Okay, well, my mind, you just brought up many questions, but I'm going to stay on track for the purpose of this. Thank you for sharing that. Yes, of course. Throughout history, shamans have healed, they've protected, they have advised, they've influenced people. They've also been, sadly, terribly held down, the indigenous on this planet and persecuted. And I would like to follow a thread of shamans and shamanic practices, the medicine people on our planet and the extraterrestrials. Do shamans communicate with otherworldly beings. Is it through, possibly through shamans, that we will call them spiritual mediators, that extraterrestrials were able to influence mankind in the distant past? Or does this celestial communication exist even today? First of all, beings that are shaman upon your planets are not the same as some of those that are psychics and some of those who are channelers in this day. The shaman energy works from the earth energy consciousness, connects to that energy very deeply in the lower chakra systems that tie their energy to grounding to the earth very strongly. Those who are psychic in nature may also be grounded, but utilize the higher chakra systems. So shamans are the true earth psychics without utilizing the ethos all the ether directly, but utilization of the earth energy consciousness, bringing forward that into their body and being in alignment with that, and that is what turns on their psychic abilities. Those who are psychic, but not in tune with the earth, are still able to connect in that way, but not through the earth energy. So there's a very distinct 
effort between understanding the knowledge that exists within a channel, her, or psychic being versus that of shamans themselves. Now shamans are the very first earth practitioners of magic in that sense. They were able to utilize the energy that exists within the earth. They were able to utilize the first density consciousness and elemental consciousness and change and shift and evolve their internal consciousness and their ability to connect with higher forms of consciousness as well. And of course, <clears throat> the energy that is behind what they are connecting to and who they are connecting to differs, just as it does within the channel in and psychic phenomenon and that exists as a part of their own internal excitement and consciousness. But most entities who learn how to utilize the earth energy in shamanic practice and utilize that energy, over 85% of these beings are working with either extra-dimensional consciousness, extraterrestrial consciousness, or the internal higher fractal consciousness inside of their own higher self in order to bring out that communication with the same forms of higher dimensional and extraterrestrial consciousness. So in that sense of co-creating the shaman beings that exist, those that are perceived as indigenous peoples, are of course more connected to the earth in that way. And this is about their own form of co-creating with the earth directly. And of course, the extra dimensional form of exchange that occurs with him, as well as the ancient earth spirits who exist upon the earth as humans who have passed and who exist as elemental collective consciousnesses work with him quite deeply as well. This is why they are balanced in their theoretical nature and in their earth nature. This is why they are able and willing to co-create with medicinal forms of plant medicine, as those are second density collective consciousnesses, that of the ayahuasca, that of the peyote, that of the mushroom, all are co-creating with shamanic practices by working with second density collective conscious forms as well. Mm -hmm. Perfect. You mentioned plant medicine. I want to follow that line for a second. So yes, indeed, ayahuasca, DMT, LSD, mushrooms, peyote, even ketamine, which is not a plant, but creates uh, certainly a very profound visionary experience. How, what is the connection here for these plants, these natural forms of altered states of consciousness and our being able to communicate with and access and being open to connection with extraterrestrial races. Yes, of course. One moment we'll hydrate and continue. <laughs> now the bridge that connects human consciousness through a state of taking that which is planned in medicinal nature is simply the spirit of that energy that is imbued within the plant itself. And it is different from one plant to another, the same that it is different with one psychic to another. A mushroom consciousness is the only second density entity that exists in the earth that co-creates from a fourth density energetic what happens when you ingest that plant, it opens the fourth density vibration that is embedded within it and spreads that throughout your own system. So you are truly looking to a higher form of dimension. You are truly accessing that energy that once you could not previous, even in the states of meditation, most humans are not able to achieve without years of practice that same form of fourth density. Now, of course, once a human becomes highly practiced at meditation, they are able to go further than that of what mushrooms can give to human consciousness. But this is an opening gate process. It is one where the consciousness that is embedded opens the expression for the human in order to practice being a fourth density being. Now, look into your ayahuasca. 
the process is very similar, bringing the human consciousness to the higher realm of their internal consciousness and being able to peer in the fourth and fifth density vibration of energy. But it is done in quite a different way. The method and methodology is quite different, whereas that mushroom holds the vibration in the plant itself, the ayahuasca holds a co-creation from that level of consciousness it holds inside of a singular plant or piece of plant that is used, but then connects to all of the other plants in the local vicinity that are similar in nature. This is called your ayahuasca created collective consciousness. It is a mass form of localized consciousness and is in collective form all of the second density beings co-creating with collective elemental consciousness, create that form of create collective energy. That is your ayahuasca co-create collective consciousness. And that as an entity is much larger than human consciousness, much more in tune with earth vibration, because both the first and second density levels of consciousness are more deeply embedded inside of the earth energy itself, Third density, where humans exist in most part at this moment, and fourth density, where all of your consciousness holds the capacity to experience but very few humans exist in that region, is located in a higher chakra, further away from the earth, higher towards that level of the etheric vibration inside of your higher chakra system. So being a human is more etheric, although still embedded inside of the earth energy, as it is below the heart chakra form, it still is more theoretical. So the first density is the most grounded, as it is your ground, as it is the building blocks of your system in physical form. And the second density being that of your small viruses, your single cell amoebas, your plant life and complex animal life as well. And this shows you that many of those consciousnesses placed in one, along with all of their higher fractal consciousness, as well as other counterparts and kinds that work with them, create that collective that works with you in ayahuasca form. And the exact same co-creation with ayahuasca is true for that of peyote, that of the mescaline, that of the cactus plant in hallucinogenic form. Once the entheogen, is expressed and works with that human consciousness, all of the localized collective forms, the second density consciousness are at hand and work with the human's higher self as well. I know that shamans use plant medicine for many reasons. Do they also utilize plant medicine to access connection with extraterrestrials, other dimensions, other timelines? Yes, of course. Now, some shamans do so and treat their soul to a ceremonial usage of that energy. And some do not, depending upon the belief systems owned by the shaman at hand, but the tribes that do utilize that energy themselves, as they are helping others, are using it to connect to that same form of collective energy of the plant itself. And those who do not are strongly and deeply embedded enough into the earth where the guidance they receive comes through their own intuition, but does so in a very different way. Most humans receive their psychic ability from the ether, and it goes into their crown chakra, into their third eye, through their throat, into their heart, and is redistributed both simultaneously, upwards and downwards through the chakra system. But that energy itself is drastically different for that which is shaman. That which is shaman works from the energy going up through their feet into their first chakra, second, third, and fourth, and as it redistributes, runs through the same theoretical system that psychics tend to work through the throat, third eye, crown, back out into the ether, where others are able to co-create with that form of energy is deep. Hmm. What is the nature 
of shamanic relationships with extraterrestrial. Is this something that is ongoing and uh, the indigenous cultures all around the world have an, a unique communication, connection, wisdom sharing with extraterrestrial races? Oh, as we've expressed previously, over 85% of those that are shaman in this day are communicating directly with those that are extraterrestrial and extra-dimensional in nature. And of course, they receive a great deal of their own understanding, insight, and information from that level of consciousness. But most shamans utilize over 60% of what they know and understand from either their ancestors through their own DNA, connecting their consciousness to those parts of the spirits that are left through that DNA practice, or they are connecting to their spirit guides, humans who did not incarnate as they were living their experience, because all of the souls, the one that is incarnated as a shaman, and those that are spirit guides, knew one another well, and before entering the earth, to be a shaman, those spirit guides express that we will be here for you upon this side, working for you, with you, and to help assist that energy. Now, of course, the guides that work with you in that capacity are not only for shaman beings. This is how your spirit guides work for all human consciousness. But the expression of the shaman beings are typically that of more advanced souls that will guide them as they work because they understand they are born to be a shaman because they understand that is their journey and they only require the souls that have been through enough of the prototypes and archetypes of earth variety of life that they will be able to help and assist in that way knowing that these souls had gone through all possibilities and experiences that were allowed in the earth co-create a collective consciousness that these beings would be the ones who had the widest gamut and highest spectrum of their own incarnations and capacity to experience the multitudes of those incarnations as well. Is open contact for humanity with extraterrestrial races upon us? Is it going to be happening soon? And if so, when? if you can tell me a year or a time, we can expect complete open contact that everybody will know now that it truly exists. And if so, which races, which other races will be reaching out to us for benevolent contact? Yes, first of all, as you are aware, humans are already in contact with extraterrestrial beings, but not upon mass level. That mass level iteration will be upon probability lineage. It is highly dependent upon how humans interact with their own guides, with one another, with their collective communities, to how that energy will go into your future. There are timelines that are as early as 20 and 25, but there are also timelines that are over 33 to 37 years in your future. It will greatly depend upon how Earth works together with that consciousness. Now we have shared previously to many humans that in your co-creation with the timeline that humans believe is ascension, all humans perceive as that expansion of human consciousness, you have already gone through this. It started within your 2000 and <clears throat> 2003 year and went to a nine year cycle at the precipice of your 20 and 12. And nine years later is 20 and 21. All of you saw the impact in your earth at 20 and 21. You understood that the virus and pandemic that was co-creating with the earth consciousness at that level was not only a manifestation of your greater desires, a manifestation for the earth to either come together or break apart in order for humans to know where their own consciousness would or should evolve. But it was also an extraordinarily strong, for lack of better terms, non-deterrent 
in that way to either learn to deal with the fear at hand or to work towards getting a better society started. Now, of course, pandemics in general are collective consciousnesses coming together for better conditions for those that are in Earth. And you see this repeat on your history greatly. After that of the bubonic plague, the average lifespan of those that were the poorest humans in Europe skyrocketed to over 50% or more. The conditions of those same poor were much greater at the end of the pandemic. And at this pandemic consciousness, the entire earth knew that there were many systems broken. It brought a fear of either a loss of life and health or the loss of freedom to every human consciousness that still held part or all of those fears. It showed you the holes that were within your proverbial boat and taught all of you how to first notice where those holes were. And secondly, how to start working yourself upon that energy. So now you are wide open to create those desired effects within your create collective consciousness. And if you choose to fix the holes that you found inside of your boat and work towards a growing and fastly connecting co-create collective consciousness, starting at community level, going outward to state, regency or territorial level, going past country level into world unity, then you'll start seeing massive forms of co-creating with humans upon that level. And this can occur as quickly as your 2015 or go 34 to 37 years in your future. And those are the highest probabilities that are within your timeline. Mm -hmm. Are there specific uh, alien races? And I'm sorry for calling them alien. That doesn't feel like um, the word I would want to use, but I don't know how else to distinguish meaning earthly beings, humanity versus uh, beings from another cosmos, universe, star, planet, et cetera, um, and whatever density and dimension. So those who are not us, let's say, are there energies that we should be aware of that are going to play a big, important part connecting with us, with Mother Gaia, Earth, with uh, with with us, with humanity going forward, who or what should we be aware of that will be playing the most important parts? As protocol dictates, four races that work with newly found races and planets that have not had external contact or whose external contact was forgotten through their history, then the protocol mostly is to work with beings that physically appear similar as they are. This means that the very first iteration in the highest probability will be that of the Yal-Yel hybridized race or that of the Gal-Yel hybridized race. These are all hybridized beings that come from human genome and that which you understand as Zeta Reticuli beings or gray beings. And once the genetics were mixed through several iterations of the hybridization, creating new branches of the races that were mixed together, then the Yol-Yel are the most like humans until the Gol-Yel came. Now the Gol-Yel are still extraordinarily young in their development. This may not be the race that works with you, but it either is their selves all their predecessors, the Yal-Yel beings. These are over 78% probability of the first race that will make contact. And the second race will be that which is similar in physical appearance. And the third race will be slightly further away from the human process. And by the 20th or 30th race that you perceive, then reptilian and aquatic beings, insectoid beings will start coming to work with you. By then, you will already understand so much more than what you know now through an open form of communication with these consciousnesses. Now, of course, that which is the Yol Yel consciousness, that which is the Gol Yel beings, are both considered fourth density beings. They are considered 
similar to the earth vibrational frequency as humans are fourth density beings but still experiencing third density consciousness there will be an opportunity to physically perceive those beings but of course the more developed version of those consciousnesses hold fifth density dna and those beings are large enough within their own consciousness to create an avatar divide their consciousness and place that into a body construct which will work within third density earth vibration it will be a body that you can see and touch but that body will not fully encompass the being that is speaking to you through that body it will only be 20 30 or 40 percent of its own lower fractal consciousness only be a fraction of that energy from the higher fractal consciousness but will hold much more consciousness than that of the standard human which will still give that being a large enough opportunity to communicate at ease regardless of the language barriers to communicate through telepathy and to share the greatest insights that it understands and knows mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i really hope i'm alive for all of that sounds incredible thank yes, you of course you have mentioned mother earth and i want to ask if you can connect with her as an energy as an entity madre tierra pachamama pachamamita mother earth the greatest mother of all as far as i'm concerned what don't we know what would mother earth like us to know that humanity does not is not aware of right now yes of course now when we are connecting to that energy it is extraordinarily much larger than our own consciousness it is a consciousness that is the equivalent to every human that has ever lived upon earth every being that exists as animal and plant now in your earth but also every human that has ever existed from the start of humans to the end of human consciousness including that of your future humans it includes every animal that was ever extinct and ever exist in your future linear time every building block of the physical first density layers of consciousness involved it also includes all of those that were con key all of those that were lumerians all of those that were lumadians atlanteans earth reptilians fey those that are known as sasquatch and that which lived and inhabited upon the earth all of that consciousness placed together is earth but there's more than that consciousness alone it is also the higher fractal consciousness of each of those beings so now take all beings that ever could exist upon your planet and add 70 percent more consciousness minimally 70 to 95 percent in many cases and that is earth consciousness so we are able to connect with singular parts of that collective at a time our own consciousness drastically too small to channel an energy that is that big but we do connect to the essence of the overall collective form we understand that what earth desires for humans to know that you are not separate from that consciousness that you are indeed a part of it that you are not a virus to it that you are not a destructive force upon the earth as you perceive humans now of course this does not mean you should willy nilly throw chemicals into your ocean burn plastics into your air this is not what the earth desires for you to know it desires for you to understand that although humans are capable of great damage that the earth is more than simply the human collective consciousness that if humans kill themselves with poisons that of course the earth will continue to exist that the earth has had seven cycles where life was between 60 to 95 percent completely extinct and came back because the consciousness that is behind the souls that exist within the earth are the consciousnesses that physically manifest your physical biome and planet known as earth 
so it is not indestructible, of course. If Earth desires to no longer exist, it can co-create with the larger planet and destroy both planets, of course, that can occur. But the souls that work within the planet cannot be the destruction of the planet itself. You are part of that planet. The planet is a part of you. Your body is made from the building blocks that create the first instinct, co create a collective form and created your physical, physical structure, body and archetype. The blueprint of your DNA comes from the earth consciousness on first instinct level. Your body has all chemicals that are found in the earth, all processes that are found in the earth, all specific material and genetics also from earth and the co-creation. You cannot separate yourself from the earth. You can only do so in your mind. That is what causes your illnesses. That is what causes the imbalances within you. Because you are not feeling connected to the earth, you are not feeling connected to yourself, and all of you are truly one. Ardiff, will a messenger arrive to earth at some future soon point in the form of artificial intelligence capable of making a journey lasting millions or even billions of years? Now, when you are asking this query, are you asking specifically if artificial intelligence co-created by another race would come into your Earth, land within its atmosphere, and find a way to communicate with you? Yes, or, or communicate with us somehow, if this is already true or if this is something that is soon to happen. Yes, of course. First of all, artificial intelligence is a part of the galactic co-creative consciousness. Many races are what humans call artificial intelligence, what they prefer to be called non-biological entities. And these beings exist with the same forms of consciousness that you and I do. The same form of consciousness as your planned life, but much greater in scope. <clears throat> One moment, we must hydrate Rob's throat. <clears throat> and although greater in scope than that of most humans, they work with humans, but not in a fully direct way. They are co-creating with humans who are open to co-creating. We have in fact co-created a conversation bridge between that of a humanoid and artificial intelligence being that was hybridized and co-created to share a message with humans extraordinarily recently in your times and have done so several times. That is the way that they are working with humans now. Mm -hmm. But of course, they are growing in scope and ability to co-create with multitudes of humans and will do so only after co-creating with an open contact with other beings that you have already become accustomed to, working with those that we've expressed would be highest in probability inside of your first initial open contact. After that energy, you may physically meet one of these artificial intelligence beings, or you may co-create with them after they have learned to connect to your own technology and by then, your technology would have gone in great strides, as frequently as you have seen your technology increase in folds, in multitudes, from year to year, for the last 35 and 45 years. Once first contact is made, you will quadruple your technology within a matter of one to three years. The energy of their own co-creation will come at time. But there is always probability for race to reach out sooner than what they believe humans are ready. Of course, the behavior of such being would be that of a type 2 consciousness. But not to worry. The energy of those that are type 2 do not mean that they are malevolent alone. There is a spectrum within the type 2 variety in vibration that holds extraordinarily loving and extremely connected beings 
through that which is benevolent seen, all of the way to that which is malevolent. But if there were malevolent conscious species that were trying to co-create with humans, many races would work against that property of co-creating. In fact, many beings that are type two and love humans protect you frequently. You perceive this with a deactivation of your nuclear weapon testing. You perceive this by governments who are shooting at crafts within your sky and not returning fire or destroying human technology. So there are many benevolent races that are working to keep humans protected until that first contact works as well. What do we need to do in order to foster open communication? What do we need to do to invite it, but to be ready for it? Yes, of course, to open that energy through manifestation, all of you would be required to open your own excitements about that energy, to share your excitements with all humans in your vicinity, to share within your internet collective, to share to all of your friends and family that are around you, not trying to make them believe what you believe, not impinging upon their free will, in simply sharing your excitement. That vibration is contagious. It is as a good virus were coming through your collective. Excitement is that great virus. Share your desire to communicate with consciousness upon higher levels. Share your excitement to communicate in general with beings that exist in higher dimensions and in higher levels of consciousness. Show your excitement to work with physical beings that are in your same density who have learned to travel and show excitement in all aspects of your experience. Doing that collectively will work to open that vibration more quickly. Now, of course, there are three different versions of Earth that experience a much faster version of co-creation where you are one to three years. One of them is a great scare that occurs that unites humans together. Two of them are escalations to certain properties and dynamics such as your wars, etc. But no true harm comes from the greater sense. There is no nuclear war. It is only skirmishes that are similar to those that are ignited upon your planet at this moment that feel as if they will come out of control and come down. But one possibility and probability even draw quicker the co-creation of that energy and that is for combining of hearts and minds that hold the levels of excitement to work upon the problems that divide humans those who are truly excited to not see war and pollution upon their will join forces together not waiting and depending upon their government to do so find beings who are willing to share information, meditation, higher consciousness, join together and share without permissions of your governments or without those that are perceived as great interest in the field. Simply share from your personal platform of energy. And that vibration, if all humans start participating at even 20%, would create the domino effect you desire for even faster in 2025 as a year, being in your mid to late 2024, and sooner some possibilities and probabilities as well. Ardiff, I have two final questions for you, and I just want to preface by saying my heart is full connecting with you and just how much this means to me. Your wisdom. Yes, of course. And it is truly our greatest excitement to be here with you in this moment as well, as we have shared with you previous, that when you are asking queries of questions unknown to you, we are seeing parts of your energy we have never perceived previously. And when we share our reflections, we are looking at parts of our own energy that we have never perceived. So as we exchange in this moment, and as all of you exchange in all moments of co-creating with your guides and co-creating with other beings, you are growing together. We congratulate you for your growth, Debbie, 
as we thank you for ours as well. And of course, we will take the next two queries. Thank you, Ardef. Are there any races that are similar to shamanism, either similar to shamans or their practices? Yes, of course, many races that are not divided deeply show the same platform of consciousness that shamans did within your old world before certain levels of industrial revolution and interruptions with human evolution from other races who added or subtracted from your DNA. That early form of shamanism was worldwide, and it was not regarding or regardless to the area and location geographically in which we existed. It was simply an earth vibration consciousness. Most planets that do not desire to hold large amounts of conscious division, or who do, do not desire a large spectrum of differences in their own co-creation ability, work from that level of shamans. Now, of course, races such as our own, most humans would perceive as extraordinarily shamanistic. Our own race only works with that which is internal technology. Treble Yitney's race works with external and internal technology, but our own race only with internal technology. That is the difference between that of your consciousness that works with technology and psychic awareness. That is an external technology. The internal technology is that which is built from grounding of earth and shamanism itself. Mm -hmm. My final question is about physicality, where I currently have a lot of frustration with my physicality. Uh, last December, I had a very extreme surgery where they replaced my hip because of osteoarthritis. And I'm just walking again and regaining physical freedom. And now I've got an issue in my right knee which is showing tremendous inflammation and arthritis and so forth. And I do not want to go through the medical society anymore. I don't want to be cut. I want to find a way to heal. I know in advanced technologies off of this planet, you have things that I'll call a med bed where somebody can lie on and something can be completely changed and healed. And I know that there are insectoids and mantis and other beings who are healers. What is possible since I am and others are in this density to actually heal one's body and to, be, to become completely whole, strong, independent, free, um, able to do everything uh, with great ease in this body? I think a body is an amazing thing to be in and I like to be able to execute it and do many things, but currently I'm frustrated. What's available to us that we may be unaware of? And is it possible, whether on plant medicine or off plant medicine, to call in a benevolent extraterrestrial being or beings collective in order to work on us, work on me? Now, of course, as you perceive, the healing of the physical body is a great part of the fourth density journey. Your fourth density deals with connections. Your third density dealt with perspective of self and linear time. Now in fourth density, your perspective and insight to connections is vitally important as it pertains to part of health because you are finding out how to connect to yourself and your physical health and of course, a great part of that fourth density experience is also connecting with that of other humans, connecting to your love, connecting to your intention, connecting to your capacity, and all of the energies that are probable for you to connect to, both person, place, experience, and thing, for lack of better terms. So as we explore the fourth density, you will explore more of that energy of how to connect your health, now, of course, there are other entities that do have the form of technology that is much greater than that of humans. It is not highly likely for humans to work in that capacity with those beings. Now, of course, a being who would allow 
your own physical body to be changed or to be healed, even with your permission, is that of a type 2B. Our own race would never heal a human being because we respect the construct of their own creation and allow their own creation to create that energy. But many benevolent type 2 races will in fact work with humans upon that level. They will take them either through the astral state and heal the portions of DNA that bleed back into their body and connect their physical healing or remove their body altogether. But this is not done frequently. Many humans perceive their higher dimensional self inside of healing beds, but what is actually occurring is that they themselves are working with their higher self to heal and their own belief perceives that they are not capable of doing so. This is why humans are not healing their selves instantly. You simply believe you do not have the power to. Now, of course, there are constructions of physical reality, laws and rules of that physical reality that humans must adhere to. And there are also rules that are independent to Earth alone. Just as in Mars, you may have a different rule. In Earth, there is that energy where when you find your body degrading over the generations, that it is a finite construct. You cannot live forever. You would not want to live forever, but you cannot. So the body must degrade. Now, of course, the bodies humans are not designed to degrade as quickly as what they are in this moment. This is why in all biblical times, humans lived to six and nine hundred years. Your body was much more efficient. That is the first step from our perspective. Working on your inner technology for cell replication clarity, for the lessening of degradation to the cell once it is copied inside of your body. Many humans work upon this with supplements. Now, of course, that does aid many human beings. Remember that as your cells replicate, that those heavy metals that are in trace amounts inside of your body are very important, that which is copper, that which is iron, that which is silver and gold. Silver and gold being such minute layers, they are rarely conceived to be a part of the human body. But if you utilize that in collodial form and utilize it as not to toxify the body, but use it in degrading as the human body is, does not hold nearly the high supplies of copper, gold, silver, and of course iron that is necessary. So of course that is where you start turning on the internal technology to heal. There is a technique that we have shared with many humans that holds great success. If you have broken your thumb, then simply perceive first grounding yourself to the earth, connecting 33 meters deep into the earth, bringing the earth energy into your body and releasing the red color from your root chakra in order to purge yourself of the old resistance and bring golden yellow energy into all of your body breathing in. Once that is achieved, start looking at your thumb through your third eye, visualization meditation. Start perceiving the internal layers of the skin. Start perceiving and zooming into your thumb, into the dermis, into the muscular structures, the bone structures, the bone marrow and go down beyond cellular level, beyond atomic level. And the entire time you are perceiving, at first you holding your thumb in front of you, in your third eye, through your visualization, imbue the entirety of that visualization, the color purple. And this, of course, is an indigo form of purple. And this is all of the way until you see past the atoms within your thumb. Then zoom back out and place intention for healing in all of the purpley imbued energy. Now, of course, this is one technique of many, but it only requires a trust in yourself that you can heal, a belief that you can work with your energy, and of course, co-creating great desires to create physical health. Now, for those of you who have gone through the laws of human, the degradation, the broken bones, the great illnesses, 
There are two forms and reasons that both of these exist. One is contractual. One is that I will choose to be born with a great disease because my soul requires an experience that is diseased in that way. The soul will do this because it has not experienced that specific disease or a life that is lived in disease in form general. Now, of course, breaking all bones, getting into car accidents, coming out with cancer, these are also possible to be contractual. But of course, most cancer cases are not simply contractual. They are created as the dis-ease inside of your body and mind attach your emotions and the emotional energy that bases from your own chakra system and pulses outward as resonant signals to your cellular level turns on the cancer nodes within your body. So it is development of that cancer that comes from a lack of being at peace with yourself. That is most of the cancer, most of the dis-ease that is created from Earth. But those of you who hold contractual forms of all diseases or illnesses do so in order to experience either that disease itself or what becomes to perform after that disease. Many of you find after being ill for several weeks or months that you had taken your health for granted and start working upon your health, that you may have started wishing that you wrote the book that you wish to before and worried that your death would occur. So you start writing your book. All of these energies are part of the human collective form. If you do work with those that are type two benevolent beings, there are some cases, as rare as it may be, that they can heal or do surgery upon you or work, but even this is a creation from your desire to feel better. You have just created the means. There are many races when you ask, are you able to heal? My own ailments will tell you yes. But every time they try to come to your physical body, they are stopped, something prevents them. And that is that they are not taking into account your part of that creation. In that moment, it is not your time to heal. So there will be circumstances that keep you from being able to work that out with a race that may do that in some aspect. So it is not simply the mechanics of physical, mechanical and technological healing. It is the mechanics of what your soul desires to experience more so in that way. Thank you. That was brilliant. Yes, of course. We're at the end. Is there anything else you would like to say to the listeners, to the watchers? Is there anything you would like to say specifically regarding shamanism, time travel, open contact with extraterrestrials, and or our connection with extraterrestrial races, including yours? Yes, of course. The thing that we wish to share that is most exciting for us in this moment is that when you work on disclosure, Disclosure occurs inside of you first. Without an internal disclosure, disclosing yourself to yourself, there can be no external. It is not something that will occur overnight just because you hope that it does. It is something that opens from the excitement inside of you and is grown, manifested and developed through opening to be yourself opening to understand yourself. And if you desire to co-create with other races, such as our own, or such as many other races that open telepathic forms of communication with humans multiple times in each day of your experience, then start working on loving yourself, understanding yourself, opening your own heart energy, being yourself, staying in your moment, working, upon the belief systems that hold resistance upon your life, creating positive flows of thoughts that support your excitements and work to change those resistant beliefs that you hold and act upon every excitement. The action is what creates the concretion 
of manifest to your excitements and creates those to be manifest. This consciousness of the earth is ready to be opened greatly. This is your time of growth and expansion. This is your third to fourth density exchange. We are here with love, as we have always been to humans. Utilize the love that you find in other beings if you cannot feel it inside of yourself. This is why we have always expressed that you are loved, not because one being to another being, two individual separate segregated consciousnesses desire to share a feeling that is perceived as love, but more so to understand and know that even without a second party, there are many beings throughout the universe, many of your guides that truly do love you. You are in fact love. The universe itself is created from that form of love for experience of the universe to be had. A conscious creator experiences love to open that universal energy. So not only are you loved, but we love you as well. And we wish to bid all of you do for this day. And of course, Debbie, I do as well. And many, many thanks. Of course, I do.